Celebrating 10 years of trailblazing and ground support. Exceed marks a decade as your leading partner in ground support equipment leasing. At the forefront of both short-term and long-term leasing solutions, Exceed adapts to your unique operational needs. Whether you're ramping up for peak season or planning for long-term growth, we provide the right equipment to keep your operations running smoothly. This anniversary, we renew our dedication to empowering your ground operations with efficiency and innovation. With Exceed, you're equipped for success today and prepared for the challenges of tomorrow. Exceed, driving excellence on the ground year after year. Explore more at ExceedGSE.com. This is Brad Compton. This is Luke Brown. This is Jeff Barrett. This is Tessa Fasen, and you are listening to the GSE Podcast. All right. Well, welcome to another GSE Podcast. I am here in Anaheim, California at Tiger's facility. And I am with Jerry Hoadley. Is that correct? That's correct, Matt. How you doing today? Doing great. Well, glad to have you guys here. It's been a little bit in the works and glad you're here. Glad to get to show you the facility and showing you everything we're doing and working towards a long-term relationship with you guys. Yeah, we've been talking about this podcast for a while now and we're finally here. And I was going to say that we're in sunny California. <laughs> However, that has not been the case so far. I came in yesterday and, you know, by all the news reports, I was coming into flash flooding. However, it ended up being okay. And today has been a fantastic day. And the facility here is is really nice and very historic. It is. I mean, this is the original facility, the original Taylor Dunn facility, which was founded in the 40s on Mr. Taylor's chicken farm when he decided he needed to build a vehicle to move chicken feed around. And all of his neighbors decided they need some as well. And from there, the facility just started to grow from a little barn type shop to what it is today with selling off of property and adding to the facility as they needed to grow. Yeah. If nobody has been to, or for those of you who have not been to the Taylor Dunn facility in Anaheim, California, from the front of this place, you would think it's very small. And so we went on a factory tour just now, which I really appreciate. We got to go see all the production and all the capabilities that you guys have here. And we'll get into those. But we were kind of walking through and seeing the production side. And it's humongous. You're manufacturing here. You have a lot of space. We do. And believe it or not, we're, we're space strapped. We need more space every day which is why we're starting to send some of the manufacturing side outsourced so we can do more assembly here. But yeah, every bring, everybody I bring to this place is just like, oh my Lord, it just keeps going. Yeah, it does. From the street, it doesn't look like what it is once you get inside and the maze that it is and just the overall size is just pretty overwhelming at times. Yeah, the production. Yeah, we were walking through production and then I was like, well, I don't know where they're assembling this stuff. I mean, I, I didn't know if there was like some separate place we're going to walk to. And then all of a sudden, you know, you come to this door and it's there's a huge assembly uh, portion of your of your factory. And it's it's really impressive. Thank you. Yeah. So. All right. So what is your title at Tiger? I am director of GSE sales and development. OK. All right. And so uh, how uh, how'd you get into GSE? Uh, a lot of people know this. A lot of people don't. I was basically born into the industry like so many of us have been. When I early on in my days, my dad was a GSE mechanic at LAX for Sunset Airline or for Sunset Aviation or I forget the exact name in the 70s. And my first introduction to ground support was going out on a to LAX, visiting a little tiny shop and seeing what my dad was doing, working on all the equipment, all the GSE on LAX back in the early 70s. And from there, he moved on to other things and ended up at Victory GSE as their, as a mechanic under my grandfather at the time. Oh, um, my Before gosh. my grandfather moved on. And then my dad worked his way and became the lead mechanic and leader of the GSE refurbishing and remanufacturing and repowering and everything at, at Victory. And I just, that's where I cut some of my teeth. And then I would just, um, throughout the years, I moved to different things because I didn't know if that's what I wanted to do. 
I ran fab shops. I learned to weld. I welded. I fabricated. I just worked in various different industries, but I always filtered back to GSE. That is an incredible GSE story. I'm I, I've never been, I've never met with anybody whose grandfather was even in GSC. <laughs> that is quite amazing. So we have some people in the industry, you know, I'm thinking Brad Compton and his dad and Luke Brown and his dad. Right. Uh, but I had no idea that, you know, even your grandfather was in GSC. Yeah, that is impressive. It's in my blood. Yeah. So now that I know how you got into the industry, tell me kind of about your history within the industry. Like, where did you start? And then how did you end up here at Tiger? All right. So, yeah, like I mentioned, my dad was Victory GSE and I worked there off and on throughout the years. And at one point I was working for them. I was running parts for them, selling parts to various different customers. And they were never really big in the type of aviation that we're in now, they were more dealing with FBOs and things like that. And I was selling parts to all these people for mostly government surplus type vehicles that we would rebuild and things like that, old Clarks and Harlands and Uniteds and that type of stuff. And one of my vendors at the time was Tiger, Ellie and Ben Schwark, back when, when they were running Tiger out of Lee Summit. And I was, they were one of my vendors. And one day I Pretty much had a falling out with the owner of Victory's son, who will go unnamed. And I decided I was just done. So I just started calling my vendors and telling them that I'm leaving and they won't be hearing from me. And I had never met Ellie other than over the phone. And he said, Jerry, just come to work for me. I need a salesman in Southern California. I need an outside salesman. So I thought about it for a couple of days. I called Ellie back and said, I'd love to take the job. He said, fine, I'll send you a credit card tomorrow. You got a company card. Let's start selling. I had never really sold to LAX and those guys before. So I just hit the streets and started knocking on doors and talking to everybody and selling GSE parts and for Tiger. And what year was this? That had to be, I'm horrible with years. Let me think about how old my daughter was. That had to be in the early 90s. Okay. So I started doing this and maybe six months to a year in, I had developed a pretty good customer base there. There was another gentleman that was hustling parts on the airport and not that I had the plan of doing this, but it basically put him out of business and everybody came to me and said, well, we're tired of shipping parts in from the Midwest. We need you to have a warehouse here. So I started looking around looked at different options, talked to some of my customers and ended up subletting a building from Evergreen on LAX on the tarmac. So I got a couple of my buddies. We got out our hammers and lumber and I took a metal building that still sits on the tarmac at what used to be Evergreen today and subframed it out and put in a warehouse and an office and started selling parts on the tarmac at LAX for Tiger. That's that's how I started work initially for Tiger. I was selling to FedEx and they said, Jerry, the guy you put out of business was painting equipment for us. So I made a call to Ellie. He said, we don't want any part of it, but you can. So I got another piece of the property and started doing some repairs and painting of equipment for FedEx on LAX. People came to me and they needed pushback parts, which Tiger didn't do. I, with my history from Victory, I knew exactly what to do and how to do it. So I started buying up old broken down T500s and hitting them in the head and making parts units out of them and rebuilding parts, selling the parts to Tiger, and then in turn, as Tiger, selling them to our customers. So it was just hustling and getting to know the industry and learning it more and more. And I did that until Tiger decided they were going to downsize their outside facilities because they were about to sell to Taylor Dunn. And I... Ellie came out, said, I'm going to shut it down and that's fine. I'm go off and do my own thing and figure out what's the next chapter. So at that point, I just started weighing options again. And a lot of the parts I was selling were remanufactured transmissions from a local transmission shop, Anderson's Transmissions, who many in the industry, as far as the LAX area, the C6s. Andy was known throughout the whole area and the West Coast for rebuilding some of the best C6s for ground support, amongst other things. So Andy was ready to retire. And he said, Jerry, why don't you buy my business? Why don't you, I've got Victory interested as well. 
why don't you guys partner up and buy it and um, move it to one of Victory's locations? Well, I had already started my own little thing that I was calling Airport Spares and Equipment at the time. And we did just that. And we formed Airport Spares and Equipment and Victory A&V Rebuilding, which started off just mainly hustling transmissions and rebuilding transmissions for LAX and other GSE customers. Did that for a couple of years. And I knew coming from Victory, they only knew most of the military surplus equipment and everything. Tug never really entered into the picture. I knew how big the, the MA tractor was in the industry. And I brought it to the table that I want to start rebuilding these like they had done with E-Model Clarks and Harlands and things like that. I want to rebuild MAs. It won't interfere with your business. I'll do it at a different location. We decided it sounded like a good plan. So I did the first one in my garage, probably the first five or so, then moved into a small shop in Cerritos, hired my dad after he'd get off work, uh, hired a couple of my buddies that knew how to wrench, and we started rebuilding a few MAs in a shop in Cerritos. Uh, Did that for a few years, and then Victory expanded their property and ended up with a shop down the street from where they are, still on the same block, and gave me a bigger facility and more capacity. So we moved it there and I continued doing this for what ended up being 20 years. Biggest year ever. I Well, I went from building one in a garage to my biggest year ever, ever was 120 vehicles. That's a lot <laughs> for a rebuilder, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. So went through all of the things everyone has, the recessions, 9-11. I was in Tahiti when 9-11 hit. I got there on 9-10. And 9-11 hit, it was world changing as we all know, but it was a weird place to be because the only news we were getting, we were in a little hotel on the water that didn't even have TVs. So the only news we're getting is being filtered through France via the internet and posted on a little bulletin board. And then we went over to the other side of the island and got caught up on some of the news, but I'm thinking, I'm, what's this going to be it. like yeah. when I get back? And we survived it and we and we grew from it. Did the rebuilders have an easier time during 9-11 just because people still had to have equipment, but they didn't have money to buy new? I think so. I think that helped. And also, but it went away from passenger and everything was cargo. So it got mm-hmm. you focused on cargo, just like some of the things we just went through recently. Did. Sounds passenger like went a away. familiar story. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. Survived that, remembered having to come out on the airport and see what it was like getting into the middle of the airport after 9-11. And it was, it was, um, we've been through some things, but through that, it got closer to where we are today. And I had gotten to a point where I knew A and V either need to expand tremendously or shrink back down because we were at that area where we were too big to make money and too small to make money. Mm -hmm. So I had already had that in the back of my head and then COVID hits and it kind of caused us to shrink down. I went from 14 people on my staff down to two other than myself. And during that time, I was starting to work on development of my own tractor, doing the lithium conversion kit that we know today. That one was built and got some media coverage. Tiger heard about it and they reached out to me to help them develop their lithium kit for their Tiger tractor. And I worked with them as a contractor for six months or so, got the product going along pretty well. Things weren't looking any better on the COVID front. And I didn't want to go through all the headaches of building a crew again that had taken me 15 years to build to get to a good crew. And they had went off and done their own things. Due yeah, to COVID it's hard to find good mechanics. these oh, days. Oh, impossible. So I got to the point where I just approached Tiger and I said, hey, guys, just why don't you just bring me on board and I'll bring my product designs with me. I'll bring the lithium with me. I'll bring everything. And we put a deal together and here I am today. So this is round two for you at Tiger. Round two at Tiger. So you were gone for what, 15, 20 years? Uh, 20 years. Yeah. Okay. And so can you kind of tell me a little bit about the history of Tiger? Because I know that you know, obviously it was a big player in the industry for a very long time. It was. And then there was uh, another period of time where they disappeared. Yeah. And now, and now you're back. So now we're back. So can you kind of tell me about that history and 
why they kind of went away and then what the difference between, um, you know, them going away and then the new company that, that is on, you know, that tiger is owned by wave and, sure. and, and what the kind of differences that the customers can expect and, and all that kind of stuff just to go over that. Sure. Well, everybody, the tiger, everyone knew of old founded by Ellie, Ellie Durante and Ben Schwark back in the eighties. It was a very good product that, that both the tug and the, the tractor and the belt loader and it was doing well, and it was quickly gaining market share over a lot of its competition, and it was ending up in all of the major package companies' inventories, the airlines' inventories. It was really making a strong headway. I, I don't know the full story behind it, but Ellie and Ben were approached by Taylor Dunn that was in a buying frenzy at the time. They made them an offer to acquire... Taylor Tiger, which they ended up doing. Taylor Dunn acquired Tiger, United Tractor, and Metro Crown all within the span of, I think, a year. And they brought them into their portfolio. I really don't know the reasoning behind it. I had left by then, mm -hmm. but I did watch the brand as most in the industry did just disappear. And what I've gathered is when it was brought into Taylor Dunn, Taylor Dunn didn't have really direct salespeople, and they really knew nothing about aviation. So they thought they could do this by putting it into their dealer network. Oh, okay. Their dealer network was all forklift dealers and- They don't have those connections. Warehousing, and they don't have the connections to the airlines. I mean, we all know this is a very, as large as it is, it's a very personal driven market. It's friendships and relationships and just hanging out with people and getting to know them and these dealers really knew nothing about that. And the parts support was put into the dealer hands also. I couldn't buy parts from Tiger unless I went to a dealer. And I would call a dealer and tell them I'm looking for this part for a Tiger tractor. And they would say, what's a Tiger tractor? <laughs> so yeah, it was the problem. Yeah. So that was the demise of Tiger. And that's when it went away. Now you fast forward a few more years. Taylor Dunn was sold a couple of times with fairly recently it was purchased by Polaris and Polaris ran it. They had decided that this Anaheim, because of the industrial products that are built here at the plant, all of the Taylor Dunn electrics, and they were doing some electric tractors as well. The TC 50 E, which was a fairly big, beefy electric tractor. Polaris decided they were at that point, they were getting into more industries and expanding, and this was going to become their electrical, their electric center of excellence. So they bought Taylor Dunn and they brought their gym car division here and put it into the Anaheim facility as well and started running all three products out of here. Well, they still didn't have any focus on aviation. They they sold a few units here and there to still some of the package handlers and things like that, but nothing to speak of. Well, after I believe it was six years or so, uh, Polaris got a new CEO and he decided Polaris was going to go back to its core, which was power sports. He went to our now CEO of Wave, Keith Simon and John Conlon, our CFO. And he tasked them with finding buyers for the three brands that were here in Anaheim, Tiger, Taylor, Dunn, and Jim. Well, they did about a year of exhaustive research, learning more about the products and learning the market and talking with private equity and seeing what could be done. They saw the history of the three brands and they didn't really want to see those be broken up or see them just be cut apart by private equity. So they put some plans together and presented Polaris with a management buyout, which they put themselves and three other gentlemen together. And Polaris worked with them to do a management buyout of the three brands here in Anaheim. So upon that is when they formed Wave. With that, they bought the three brands. And during that time, they had already decided they wanted a big focus on GSE because they saw what the market could be during their research and looking to to get rid of the three lines and they one of their main focuses was ground support and they saw what it could be saw the potential in it they had already reached out to me to help with the electric they learned more about me and my history and we had done a uh, expo the gse expo in vegas 
they shared a booth with A and V. And they were just in awe of all the people that that I knew and what how much I knew about the industry. And that's when they they said, This is where we want you. And now they've focused on me leading the team for GSE. I'm introducing them all to what GSE is. And we are GSE is the number one product of the three that they're putting momentum behind to regain the market share that they lost and gain even more and put a quality tractor out there that's dependable and robust and long lasting and sustainable with our new Tiger Lithium. That's kind of where we're going. And yes, we went away for a while, but we're here to stay now. I like it. I like it. Thank you so much for giving me that explanation. You're welcome. So tell me a little bit about the product line that you do have currently with Tiger. So I know you've got a, you've got a bag tractor yeah. and that comes in lithium, lead acid and internal combustion, I think. Is that correct? No, no lead acid. Oh, okay. So it's just lithium and lithium internal combustion. And internal combustion and only gas at this point, no diesel. Okay. All right. And then you also have maybe a lav cart and a water cart? We do. We've recently launched our Bigfoot, which is one of our Taylor Dunn products. It's a burden carrier, a small pickup truck, basically. It's known in the industry. I mean, it's very well used in industry and it's even used by yeah, quite a few airlines. Yeah, you see it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But people didn't realize the, the capabilities of it. I mean, our Bigfoot product can haul 3,000 pounds and tow 10,000. So I pitched the idea being the GSC sales and development and that we take that product and we put a lav body and a water body on it that are palletized that can be taken off and switched or whatever need be. And then as well, a bag cart, a scaled down bag cart that we're calling the, the hot oh, shot or okay. the bag truck. So we offer those three products on our Bigfoot bodies, on our Bigfoot uh, format. We've got the Tiger Lithium and Tiger Gas. And then you've also heard of Gem Car, which is another one of our products. And now we're starting to work towards designing vehicles for use on the tarmac for people that want airlines and ground handlers that need sustainability. Our Gem Car comes in anywhere from our ELXD, which is a pickup truck that could be configured in, in numerous footprints and body styles. Then we have a two-passenger vehicle, a four-passenger, and a six-passenger. And we're starting to see more interest in those for supervisor vehicles, for moving cleaning crews around the airport, for everything like that, for a sustainable option, because they can be plugged into a 110 outlet and charged. So we don't need the infrastructure that's needed for a lot of the other equipment. Those are our main GSE brands right now. Along with one that I didn't mention, but should and definitely need to, we also have a repower kit, a full lithium oh, yeah, repower right. kit. Yeah. And so what is that repower kit for? The MA50? Right now it's for our current tractors. If someone buys a gas vehicle and then decides they want to convert it to lithium, it can be easily be done. But also for, for MA50s or any MA series of tractor, it's a direct pull your gas drive line out and drop it in with everything you need to make that vehicle new again, with the exception of some steel and the steering system. It includes new braking system, complete new electrical system, new drive axle, power module, everything you need, brake system, parking brake system, everything. Does this cover the M1A as well, or just the MA? Just the MA. Okay. Just the MA just series. Sure. Yeah. We have aspirations to move it to other products as well, other footprints, the M1A, possibly some Harlan, different things like that. But currently it's the MA and our Tiger 40. So tell me a little bit more about, is it the Tiger? So what is it called? The, the uh, I-40, L-40? The, the, our, our new tractor. Yes. It's, we have, it's the Tiger 40. It's the Tiger 40. And it okay. Comes, I knew it had a 40 in it. Yeah. Right. Tiger 40 and it comes either L or G gasoline or lithium. Okay. So what is the towing capacity? About 54,000 pounds. We're really not giving it a draw bar rating just because in my experience, draw bar is so confused in the industry. And so we're more going on a towing capacity yep. format than a, than a draw bar. Format. So 54,000. Yeah. And then what, so you were telling me on the line that a lot of these parts people can get from their local Napa place, or, I mean, they're, they're kind of more common use parts. There's a lot of parts commonality between this vehicle, the Tiger 40 and the MA 50. Yeah. 
with my background, I'm a graduate of LAXU, as I like to say. Uh -huh. You know, I grew up on the tarmac and I'm wrenching and I love keep it simple engineering. So, and the biggest demise of a product is when you can't support it. Um, we all hear it every day of people that can't get parts. Well, when I worked with the team here to design this tractor, I told them it has to, we can't have parts designed just for us. We have to use what I call industry standard components. So we share our steering system, our drive axle, our brake system, everything with a tug MA. So if people have a fleet of MAs and they have parts on the shelf and they buy one of our tractors and the steering gear fails, it's the same steering gear. Uh, brake caliper fails, it's the same brake caliper. Master cylinder, the same. Steer axle, the same. So it just makes it so much easier when parts are needed to have them at your fingertips. Yeah, and the mechanics already know how to work on all those as well. Yeah, the mechanics know how to work on them. The operators know how to operate it because it's a very similar look and feel and drive experience as what they're used to on the tarmac. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I I really enjoyed uh, really enjoyed looking at it, and um, yeah, you've made a lot of nice improvements. And so, tell me about the the battery pack uh, and what makes your battery pack different, and kind of just explain that whole thing to me. The lithium. Sure. Well, everybody knows lithium now. I mean, it's very become yeah. very common, and there's a lot of companies out there building lithium batteries. Ours is a little beyond a battery. We like to say our product, our tractors are fully integrated, meaning that every part of the drive system talks to one another. So we don't have a battery per se. You can't necessarily take ours out and replace it with someone else's. We have a power module, which that power module is the battery, but also the motor controllers built into it. The BMS is built into it. All the contactors are built into it. Our patented overturn protection module is built into it. Everything is built into this power module, and then it's plug and play and can communicate it with all of the other components, the, the rear end, the charger, everything is can enabled and they speak to one another. So it's a 48 kilowatt pack. We're available with both onboard charging and offboard charging, and most everything we're building has both. So you can fast charge with a DC, DC fast charger that's can enabled. And speaking the correct protocol, we currently work with ACT, Minute that is programmed correctly, and Posi Charge. And then with our onboard charger, which is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, if you don't need that super fast charging, you can plug into any 220 outlet or even your roadside type EV chargers or your home EV chargers. Because we have a J1772, which is automotive standard for, for level two charging, we can charge from that with our 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard. So you have a ton of options for people. Infrastructure is everyone's challenge, and we're trying to make it to where that's not a challenge for us. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, I think we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll come back here in one minute. All right. Thank you. This episode of the GSE Podcast is brought to you by Exceed Ground Support Equipment Leasing, your trusted partner for GSE Solutions. We specialize in tailored operating leases for ground handlers and airlines, offering top-notch equipment and flexible terms to suit your needs. Partner with the industry leaders, we're committed to bringing you the equipment offerings that keep your operations running smoothly and efficiently. Choose Exceed for competitive rates and exceptional customer service. Visit ExceedGSE.com today is soar to new heights with Exceed Ground Support Equipment Leasing. All right, we're back. So now we have been joined by Keith Simon. How you doing, Keith? I'm doing well. All right. Hey, uh, so what is your, what's your title here? What do you, what do yeah. you do here? Thanks for having me. What would you say you do here? I am the leader of Wave. Uh -huh. So one of the found co-founders of the business Wave and my title is president and CEO. Okay. And you're also owner? 
Is that correct? Like, is this like explain the ownership uh, yeah, piece to me? Correct. So, so Wave is a manufacturer of low speed electric vehicles. Wave was formed to purchase the brands of Gem, Taylor Dunn, and Tiger from Polaris in 2022. And uh, we are a uh, OEM. So uh, do we do all the design uh, manufacturing of the vehicles under these brands here in Anaheim, California? And that's really what we're about. We're about, uh, if, you, if you look at our vision, it's energizing forward motion. And uh, we are doing that every day with uh, these brands in the low speed uh, electric vehicle space. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's a great product. We got to tour the facility. We're going to do a little bit more of the touring the facility uh, after the podcast. But uh, what we saw out there is uh, is fantastic. You have an unbelievable facility. And I can't believe how much welding you're doing out there. And just there's a lot of real work going on out there. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the interesting things about our uh, most legacy brand, Taylor Dunn, is it turned 75 years this year. So, Oh, congratulations. Since 1949. Uh, this business has been here in this location, manufacturing electric vehicles uh, of some sort. Yeah. I mean, there's no way you could purchase this property now no. with the way the way the things are, uh, the way things are going in Southern California. So right, this is, right. yeah, it's fantastic. I can't believe, you know, I was driving, I uh, dr- drove right by an in and out in a Starbucks and then there's Taylor Dunn sitting in the middle of all this commerce and it's, it's crazy. You're not just in some park somewhere. It's in the middle of Anaheim. Yeah, five miles from the magic place. That's right. The happiest place on earth. Yeah, so, yeah. But um, all right. So just wanted to talk to you about a couple things. So first of all, are, are you all looking at like telematic solutions? Like, you know, Exceed has kind of gone in and, and we're looking at some telematic solutions. A lot of the OEMs are looking at telematic solutions. That's something you all have on the table. Yeah, actually, we, we do some telematics today for um, certain segments of our business and specific customers in the business. And telematics is interesting because there's value for it uh, for us as an OEM. And I'll talk a little bit about how we think about that. But then there's tremendous value as well for our customers who are largely uh, fleet management you know, customers uh, in, in terms of operating and, and managing their fleets. Several customers that we have in some of these commercial segments have their own specification for telematics. And so they specify uh, the type of telematics and how they want it integrated into the vehicle. And we do that on their behalf. As an OEM, we have a desire to have a more comprehensive telematics solution for us to understand the data behind the operation of our vehicle, especially in this electric vehicle space. So it's a little different value for us than it is for a fleet operator where we're looking at, we want to understand performance and how do you turn that into product development uh, initiatives to improve performance on the vehicle, whether it be on the battery side or the charging side. Um, We want to be able to turn that into marketing uh, material as electric vehicles are still relatively new in some of these spaces, especially like GSE. So, Mm -hmm. you know, to be able to come to the table with uh, real world data around how the vehicle performs in an actual application versus theoretical data from the design of a vehicle, that's very valuable for us and for our customers. Um, And then, you know, customer segments like the ground support space are looking for, you know, next level of fleet management capabilities on, uh, on their uh, assets as well. So, we uh, were part of the way into developing a solution now that we will um, launch in the not too distant future. And uh, that'll be something that for sure will start on our GSE equipment, our Tiger product specifically, and potentially evolve to some of our other commercial products also. Yeah, we're like, we're in the same position. We just, we just recently started putting some telematics on our units and it's more for us at this point, right? Obviously the customers really enjoy having that data and access to that data as well. And the moment you give them the data, they're like, oh, I, I didn't know that I could even have all this stuff. And it's obviously really valuable to everyone, but it's just, you know, making sure that you have the right provider and being able to make sure that everybody's happy with, with the service from that provider. And, and uh, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where that goes and we'll, we'll look out for that. Like, what does service look like from, um, from Wave's perspective? Yeah, so service for us is one of the key elements of uh, the product that we provide, right? I mean, most every customer that we have is running some type of a business or operation using our vehicles. So downtime is critical uh, and our ability to support a customer or one of our dealer partners. So interesting uh, fact about Wave is that a large portion of our commercial products from the gym 
business and from the Taylor Dunn business are sold through an extensive dealer network. We have over 400 dealer locations around the country that they are the extension of our business for sales and service support. So our capabilities from a product engineering and a product technical support standpoint are largely remote based here in Anaheim. And so what we do is support those customers that and, and our dealers that are supporting the end users uh, remotely. Uh, in most cases, that's a, a very effective way for us to support uh, from a technical service standpoint. And then our direct customers, which is more relevant here in the ground support equipment space, customers like yourself, we will provide the same level of remote technical support. And, and our team is then uh, as well capable of uh, deploying for on-site technical support um, should we need to in the case that there's not adequate uh, on-the-ground technical support or capabilities at a, at a customer. And, and we do that often. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So what is the, what is the warranty on this new Tiger 40? Uh, the Tiger 40, the, the version that is electric, comes with a, a five-year uh, warranty. Okay. And then what about the battery? Uh, Cause I know you all kind of have like a, a special battery in there and what, what's the warranty on that? Well, that's, that's the part of it. That's the five years. Okay. And we foresee it lasting much longer than that. We just don't have enough collective data yet to really put behind that. But our power modules and our motors are built by the same company that's building power modules and drive systems for RCL for their repowers and remanufactured electric main deck loaders. And we've recently, Brian has recently had a pack back at his place that was six years old to get a BMS update. And he tested all the cells in the pack and they were still at more than 99% of their original life. That's incredible. So we foresee these batteries lasting, outlasting the tractor almost, but we're the current warranty is five years, but we see that you're not going to need to replace that for much longer than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's going to outlast the tractor. I, I, saw, I, I saw the the enhancements that you have made to that tractor and it's unbelievable. It looks like, I mean, you all done a, re- a lot of engineering on that thing, you know, to make it, it, it looks very durable to me. That was the goal. Um, yeah. Most durable, dependable tractor on the market is the goal. Yeah. I mean, your years, you can tell your years of just you know, being in ground support equipment and seeing the the fault points in that tractor and being able to make it just more robust, I think is is incredible. Rebuilding tractors for 20 years, I've seen the worst of the worst. So yeah. I knew where all the weak points were and made sure we engineered around those so that it wouldn't be weak points anymore. Yeah. It's it's a common philosophy we use across our business and product development. It's these cycles of feedback that we get. And we've worked very close with some large end customers in the ground support equipment space to take their feedback, uh, a couple of the Jerry's experience and knowledge. And uh, that's really what's gone into this product. And we do that across our, our product portfolio um, completely is as we get feedback either you know through our tech support group around opportunities in the field or through our warranty process, themes, uh, warranty failures in the field, it happens. Their vehicles, they go into harsh environments and high duty cycle applications. And with an engineering team here on site that's connected directly to those service teams that receive those first signals from the customer, we're able to act really quickly and iterate product almost immediately to uh, continuously make it better. To touch a little bit on the service side and what Keith just said, to uh, go a little deeper into that. I- quote from one of our largest customers is, we know things break. It's just how quickly quickly you react to get them up and going again and prevent it from happening in the future. And that's what we pride ourselves on. I 100% agree with that. Everybody's got problems, right? Every manufacturer is going to have failures out in the field. It's just how quickly you react and how you react to that problem. That, that That's what people want to see. And I think, you know, like I said, I think your year, your years in this industry have taught you that and um, you're bringing all that experience here and, and it's, it's really going to show, I think, uh, to the customers out there. So really impressive stuff. Okay. Is there anything else that we want to cover? I think we've touched on quite a bit. We're, we're working to be the best product out there and we're looking to help with every airport's sustainability goals. I'm available to consult with airports on charging and how not only you can get our equipment in, but others and just looking at ways to help the industry get more green than it's ever been and reach all of these sustainability goals. I do think that the repower kit is going to be really interesting because so many people have MA50s in their fleet and you all have a 
for what it sounds like a great repower kit. And it also um, comes with the 5,000 hour warranty. Uh, five year. The five year. Right. Sorry. The five year yeah. warranty. Five year warranty on the tractors. We're doing 2,000 traction hours or five years. Okay. And traction hour. So for those that don't quite understand that one, an electric tractor, it's only putting hours on the hour meter when it's in motion. Um, there's no idle time that's eating away at a at an hour meter. It's only tractive effort hours that are being tracked. Yeah. Well, that's great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the other um, interesting thing that we've learned here is Jerry's joined our business and we've brought Tiger out as a more prevalent brand. And I'm not sure how much of this you guys covered in the history of Tiger, but you know, Tiger was purchased by Taylor Dunn and uh, almost went away for a period of time, decades before we got involved in the business. But we very purposefully, as we stood up Wave, brought Tiger out as a, a brand and uh, have strategically been investing in this ground support equipment space. It's, it's super intriguing as a business owner to sit on an airplane and see the amount of vehicles that surround every commercial jet on, uh, on the tarmac and, and at, at, at points in time, not seeing one of our vehicles out there. And if that doesn't motivate you, as I always tell my team, if that doesn't motivate you as a, as a business leader in the, in the EV space and probably in the wrong business. And, yeah. um, probably most interesting to me is, uh, not just bringing tiger back to the forefront as a player in this space, but the opportunity that that's brought to us to educate people on the application of our other products in the Taylor Dunn portfolio and the Gem portfolio and, and the versatility of those vehicles and the simplicity of those vehicles in lowering their cost of operations and also achieving their sustainability goals. They're, they're, there's a reason Taylor Dunn's been around for 75 years, right? It's, a, it's an extremely versatile vehicle, very durable, very safe, and, and very simple to operate. Uh, gem very similar and um, you'll continue to see more and more of our wave vehicles of the gem taylor dunn and tiger brands uh, around planes as you uh, as you travel over the coming years yeah and it, you know we've we've had obviously had some meetings with you guys exceed has and we're obviously very excited about your product so much that you know we invested in, in buying some we have uh, five of your tiger 40 uh, electric bag tractors coming coming to us in indianapolis and they're available for uh, rent or lease. So if anybody wants to to try out the uh, try out your product, they can come to Exceed and and test them out. Yeah, we look forward to working with you, Matt, and your capabilities and your abilities to have stuff ready for quick ship for our customers that need stuff in an immediate turn. And we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, your your five units are on the line as we speak. We'll go take a look at them. Yeah, Jerry and I got a picture in front of, uh, you know, the unit that is being built and coming down the line. So history being made here in Anaheim. And yeah. it's going to be, um, it's it's a great partnership and, and we appreciate it. And thank you so much for having us out here and letting us, you know, view your facility and and check it all out. And it's, um, it's really great. I really appreciate it. You're part of the family. You're welcome anytime, Matt. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for having us on your uh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Not it's a, a problem. Pleasure. Yeah. Well, um, I guess that'll do it. And uh, this is Matt and Jerry and Keith for the GSE podcast. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the GSE podcast. We hope you found it informative and engaging. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with your colleagues and peers in the ground support equipment community. Your support is invaluable to us. We'd appreciate it if you could take a moment to rate and review our podcast. Your feedback not only encourages us, but also helps expand our reach within the GSE community. Keep an eye out for more episodes as we continue to explore the dynamic world of ground operations, bringing you the latest trends, insights, and stories from the industry. Thank you for listening to the GSE podcast. Until we meet again, stay grounded and keep pushing forward.